Oh my gosh, come on in, fellow pop culture aficionado. Or our moms. Hi, Hi moms. moms. Enjoy us on the couple's couch. We saved you a seat. We're Tanner and KB Cunningham, a married couple who dish out hilarious banter and spark interesting conversation. From the wild world of reality TV and the furthest reaches of the internet, we're here to unpack it all. So grab a snack, settle in, and let's explore the fascinating intersectional world of pop culture. Good morning. Welcome back to the Couples Couch Podcast. Welcome back to the Couples Couch. Hi. Hi. Happy Tuesday, babe. How are you? Oh, I'm great, actually. It's Tuesday. Yeah. The sun is shining. It is. They're doing concrete repairs. Oh, right. They <laughs> are. I was just staring and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Yeah. So if you hear that on the pod, concrete repairs. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's been a good day. We had a really interesting day yesterday afternoon a good but interesting one yeah actually let me give you the rhyme of the day before we oh jump in. please i need the rhyme of the day speaking of interesting days hmm. locked out of our own home yeah and let's hope kelly clarkson they don't throw her all the stones oh all this today on your clickbait culture stories everything about our life and in between couples couch podcast hi hi <laughs> yes so it is tuesday welcome back norbit Norbit. Tuesday. 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 Um, so yes, it's Tuesday. The sun is shining. We're actually looking at our beautiful new flowers that we got and yes. planted. Oh, they're so beautiful. Yesterday afternoon, we actually, like about three o'clock, Tanner had a job yesterday uh-huh. and it was like pretty quick. So that was great. And then we went to Home Depot. Yes. Home I have Depot. my honey on honey project. <laughs> <laughs> I had my honey do list and honey I did. Oh, honey's been doing. Honey's done did. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. No, literally honey only has a couple more tasks. Yeah, well, and they're big ones. I'll be honest. So like I got some stuff to do. I'll be, I'll be up front, but it's okay. Yeah. And we just can't do them yet because of the weather. Right. So what we need to do is sand and repaint our porch railing. It's wood and like it's starting to chip. And so we don't want it to ruin the wood underneath of it. So it's time to sand it off and repaint. And to be fair, Tanner's been trying to do this for a little bit and I wouldn't find the paint codes. (laughs) Well, yeah, but that's okay. Like we thought it was going to be a harder mental lift than it actually was to find the paint codes. Yeah, we had to find the paint codes, which was literally just me searching paint codes in (laughs) my email. So, you know, it was really quick. But because of our HOA, we have to do specific colors and I would have just taken in like a paint sampling chip. like a chip that and we pulled like, off of the rail that's been yeah. there for um 15 years yeah <laughs> but like can you uh match this for us <laughs> and it would be completely different color <laughs> yeah, yeah that seems like us but luckily we did the right thing we found the paint samples mm-hmm. and we got that we also got some beautiful flowers oh, i had so much fun <clears throat> neander in through home depot i know we have a lot of content i can't wait to show it was you all. so dreamy okay it was. my dream home is not a large home especially like I think about this home when I'm like 60 yeah to be honest or like 50 or 60 so yeah we could like get those children out if we're gonna get any of them and (laughs) then we can like move right in I'm just thinking about like that's because the the home the home's smaller right but it is a cottage yeah and like if it's like a I would love if it was like beach whatever but it's a cottage and it's covered in flowers and there's just like beds of flowers everywhere and moss is growing up and ivy's growing and it's yeah that's just like my dream yeah so, when we go to home depot and when we get to get flowers it best feels, thing ever yeah it feels like such a dream um and so we got all of our supplies from home depot and brought them upstairs had to make a couple of trips because we got a few different things we got like potting soil paint all the flowers all that stuff so kb Help me with the one trip and then got baby boy out of his kennel. Mm-hmm. And once she got him out, I went back downstairs to get the, the remaining items. Mm-hmm. And I started taking the stuff outside. Mm-hmm. She started taking the items outside. I meet her out on the porch and we're like, hey, should we like go ahead and pot these now before? Because there was going to be a thunderstorm that came in. We're like, yeah, let's go ahead and do it real quick. And so, great. So we get all our supplies, get them all mm-hmm. to the porch. We found our gardening gloves. Like, Yeah. Yeah, we had to. Yeah, we had to find all of our items, and then once we did, I was like, oh, I don't want all these bugs like flying in. So right, we don't really have bugs, but we do. You can get like little flies, little and gnats, gnats and, and it's just yeah. annoying. And so we were like, we don't want any bugs flying in. And also, I had a dream last night a bird flew in our house, and I, had, <laughs> I didn't tell you. I was like, I think a bird flew in, and I woke up and I was like, that wasn't real. That's funny. Um, and so I was like, well, let me just shut the door. So I shut the door. Don't think anything of it. A few minutes pass. I try to open the door. <laughs> Uh, the door doesn't budge. And I'm 
dying on the inside and trying to hold it together. And I'm so stressed because we don't live on the first floor. Yes, exactly. We live on the second floor. So to get down is already going to be like a nuisance. It, it's it's doable. Be, I like mean, I would have to spider man. Ceilings? Cause it's like that. Fall. We have like 12 foot ceilings. So like it's, it would be, like I said, I would have to spider man a little bit, but like with the neighbor's balcony, like I think I could have done it. Like I could have yeah. gotten down if I absolutely had to. Yes. But there's a storm coming in. <laughs> right. So there was really no need to get down because I'm like, you kept like trying to get me to get down. And I was like, but if I get down, like, what am I going to do? I don't have a key. So that's the other thing. We didn't have any keys. Um, <laughs> what if you got down? We could have missed everything. That was so crazy. <laughs> true. That's true. If I would have actually. Yeah. Well, anyways, we'll I tell you in a minute. That now. Um, so she kept KB was like, you can like get down. I was like, yes. And when I do, what's what am I going to do? And so you're like, yeah, that's true. We so think we our front door is locked. We think our front door is locked. I turn on all the lights because we have the Hue app. So luckily mm -hmm. I was able to just do that from my phone. I turned on the outdoor lights so we weren't in the dark and um, was able to. S we couldn't really tell, though, because our deadbolt is it's like matte black. Mm -hmm. And so like it's just that matte black on top of the matte black. And so you really can't tell like which way it's turned or twisted. Oh yeah. And so we're like, we think it's locked because 90% of the time, we as soon as I walk in the doors. door, Tanner it's locked. Tanner made me a door locking woman. Yeah. She used to walk around, like take Brooks out before I lived here, leave her front door fully unlocked. I'm like, were you just letting murderers enter the home? I'm confused. Well, and to be fair, like we basically live in a retirement community. <laughs> um still murderers live in retirement communities no, literally but i'm um, like i just knew everybody on this floor and i didn't think much of it and i would always do it so we're door locking folk yes yeah, so we just like are like okay yeah obviously i locked the door as soon as i came in because that's so tanner of me to do that <laughs> like hello i did that obviously so we're in contact with one of our friends who lives in in town and they have a key to our house because they've like our besties we love them so much and like they help us do stuff we help them do stuff and mm -hmm. they're just good folks they have a key to our home. So we're like, hey, we actually see him drive on the parkway. We're like, yeah. oh, he's getting off right now. We see his truck. I was like, and I think he gets off right now. So that'd be correct. We're freaks. Right. I'm like, that would be correct from his mode of transportation yeah. from where he Literally. works to his home. It should be about that time. It should time. be about that time. And so I texted him. I'm like, hey, are you home? And do you still happen to have our house key? Because we're locked out on our porch. <laughs> and he was so confused. He was like, your porch? Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's a long story, but we're locked out. And uh, do you have the key? And he was like, no, his wife had it. It was in her purse at work and she works 45 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, well, we can, we can weather this for 45 minutes because as KB mentioned earlier, there's a storm coming in. There's a storm coming in. It's already like four o'clock. I'm thinking... Okay, like we're gonna, she'll be home by like five. Right. Like it's gonna be. Okay. It'll be okay. So we go ahead and preemptively roll down the blinds. We're like, we're gonna weather the storm out here. We're gonna live, laugh, love. It's gonna be grand. We roll down the blinds and we hear back from our friend. He lets us know that the keys are in her purse, which I think I already mentioned, but she's not gonna be off until eight. 45 i think 8 30 i think was the end of her last meeting that evening which is actually ridiculous we need to talk about that, that but school system BS, though. yeah that's so real baby you remember when i used to work those hours i do that's why we don't do that anymore yeah. but um she Our wasn't marriage would be over <laughs> no truly Literally. truly um she went ahead and they let us know she wasn't gonna be her last meeting was 8 30 and again she wasn't gonna be it was still 45 minutes from there so we were gonna be out on the porch for like five six hours and like a storm we had have no water no water i had to pee in that moment we were hungry we were trying to decide if we could like DoorDash food we were like maybe if we get something that comes in like a bag they can throw it up to us so if it's like if we just got like cheeseburgers or something could they just throw up bags <laughs> and they won't get messed up and we were like but wait a minute how are they gonna know it's our house yeah can they throw what if they don't have really that ability like right. there was so many layers to that situation so many layers. and our friend he was like yeah i'm sorry she won't be here he was like but he did offer to come with his big ladder to pick us up like the fireman off of our porch <laughs> and take us to his house until she got home which would have been so funny and it was so kind it was so sweet i was like thank you but no no well like we'll figure it out <laughs> yeah we'll figure it out because we knew someone else that potentially had a key long story short they did not they only had our old house key our which old, was house, fine. old house like, key, yeah. thankful that they were willing to go and look for the keys definitely thank you love you um but 
So we're like, okay, what else? What's the next thing? So we, we do? start calling, calling locksmiths. locksmiths. Yeah. And the first locksmith you called, we're like, yeah, man, just text me all the information. I'll text you in a minute. And we, luckily, we didn't hear from him. How for much like do you think minutes. it would be to locks or to three hundred dollars? That's what I was thinking too. Because you're gonna have to be like, he's gonna be here probably for like thirty minutes. I uh-huh. don't know. And like you're gonna, because they go from place to place. So I think they like upcharge like all their mileage For and tax sure. and everything. And then just honestly, like labor fee, like a common like s- service call fee is a minimum usually eighty five to one hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah, no, that's fair. The one quote that I did receive was one hundred and fifty dollars, but he wasn't even here. He was like an hour and a half away, so he wasn't coming to me. Yeah, he was like, yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. In that time that I'm like in contact with several locksmiths, like I'm in contact with like three or four trying to figure this out. And don't skip now. This is where it gets good. Yes. If you skip now, you've missed the whole story. Um, We see our neighbor pulling in her garage. We're like, oh my gosh, she can check the front door. Mind you, it's thundering and lightning and raining hard. Pouring down rain. And so KB yells at her. She's like, hey girl. I'm texting you because she has her number because she didn't want to like tell her what was happening because as she mentioned, it's raining and thundering and like she wanted her to get in the house. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, okay, yeah, I'll look at it when I get inside. So she goes inside. How long do you think she waited to text you back? At least six to 10 minutes. Because you told her the full story, right? What did you say in the text? No, literally. Hold the We're reading the text. I'll pull up the receipts. (laughs) Please, La Roach, pull up the receipts. Okay. The receipts are, I wish I was La Roach. She's so (laughs) fabulous. Can you imagine what would you dress me in? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) You don't need to dress me. I don't I can dress, to dress you. Myself. Actually, I want to make a TikTok about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, okay. Sorry, guys. The text were, mm-hmm. I said, hi, blank. It's me from upstairs. Can you do us a favor and see if our front door is unlocked? We got locked on on our patio. The thing got stuck. Have you told them what's in there? Yeah, no. So, we have a little locking system that we created for ourselves it's a dowel rod that Mm -hmm. sits in the base of the other sliding glass door that we have it's just like extra protection because there's already like a lock but like you know i think we have beautiful window doors yes kb had put it inside of that little lip that it lives in Mm -hmm. and it set it up horizontally no vertically it was Mm -hmm. sitting horizontally to keep it locked Mm -hmm. yes and then she set it up vertically and once i shut the door that is what indeed fell into the thing and locked the door back (laughs) So we were stuck with this dowel rod in our doors. Mm-hmm. And so there's no budging because yeah. that's the whole point of having one. Is yeah, like, it didn't move. Yeah, it's just like one extra precaution. Yeah. I was a single girl living alone and it just worked. <laughs> it's And it, boy, did it. So she texts our this neighbor. Person. Mm-hmm. So I'll go back. I was like, hey, it's me from upstairs. Can you do us a favor and see if our front door's unlocked? We got locked in our patio and the little wooden holder caught it stuck. Yes. We have someone's bringing a key, but it won't be for a little bit. And she was like, so that was... 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes between that. And then literally I said, no worries. And she immediately said, sorry, your door is locked. Now this is where I get really teed. Our door is locked. We have a camera. Uh, Exactly. And in that time that she told me that the door was indeed locked, I had seen we'd gotten a grocery delivery and it had populated on the camera. Mm -hmm. So I'm like feverishly looking at the cams. I'm like, KB, she did not come to our camera. I'm like, no, she said she did. I, I trust said, her. No, and swear then to God, Tanner she did pulls not. up the receipts. Law wrote himself. Mm-hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, no, she didn't. And so I was like, you need to text her back. And Katie was like, no. I was like, I don't want to text her back, Tanner. I was like, that gives me stress. I'm like, a confrontation? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so we had to figure but out. But like, mind you, it's thunderstorming. It's cold. I have bricks covered on the couch. Yeah, so like we have shaking. a little couch outside. He's shaking. He's freezing. I'm covering him with pillows because he's nervous from the storm. Tanner looks like an old Yenta <laughs> covered with a huge fur thing. A huge just like fur shaking blanket. in the yeah. corner, freezing. I'm like, somebody get somebody's grandma inside. She's freezing. Yeah, my bones are cold. I know. And then like, I'm just holding bricks. He's trying to keep him warm. Yeah. Like we're cold. Frozen. <laughs> And she tells me she didn't come and look. No, she didn't say she didn't come and look. I mean, she told us she came and looked. And so Tanner helps me figure it out how to say it. I'm like, hi, I'm just checking. Did you go check our house? Um, I'm only asking because I didn't see you come through on our camera. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) And she said, let me go verify. Well, she gave her our correct. And I was like, well, tell her. After 20 minutes, though. I said, well, tell her which address it is because she honestly... Okay, let me also say, I'm trying to give her a lot of credit right now because there are two houses on our floor. And so by power of deduction, we are either on the right or the left side. So like she should have known which one we were in. No, literally. And 
It took her 20 minutes to say, let me go verify. 20 minutes. So I mind you, we're continuing to shake outside on the freezing right. cold porch for 20 minutes after she told me she checked our house. So and she neighborly. Did it. That's neighborly behavior, I would say. <laughs> so what happens? What? She says, let me go verify. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, somebody's walking through our front door. Our neighbor who didn't in indeed check our home the first time but did the second (laughs) yeah so she did save us but i'll probably never speak to her again yeah i'm thankful that she saved us i did wave this morning as i was walking brick sand i might do a one finger wave if i see her yeah i was just like are you kidding me and this is just not the first time like we've asked one of them to check on something upstairs when we were backstory backstory we got a doordash delivered to us incorrectly whenever we were fresh out of town had just left it was the dead of summer so it was very warm and they delivered it to our door so i texted her husband i said hey bud could you please go get this off our front door if you want to eat it live laugh love it's not ours it was delivered there incorrectly but if the very least please could you throw it away so there's no flies buzzing whenever i return home yeah absolutely man he texts me back two days later i text him back hey were you able to go get that i never saw you on the cams never heard from him again never heard from him so again again, i'm just like done with them they have lost my trust twice now yeah so all that to say we were all stuck outside for about two hours yesterday in a rainstorm luckily we have beautiful blinds that cover a lot of it but it was still just cold right it was freezing and if you wondered this is not the neighbor who was evil to kb and told her she needed a new car this is someone else no this is someone else and this is not old male who also looked at that bag of food and didn't throw it away for multiple days right yeah. he just looked at our camera waved and pointed and he was at like it. you have food here we would try to like talk to him through the cameras he's like 110 so he never heard us his hearing aids <laughs> were not picking it up that day no literally like the frequency like, <laughs> yeah he was just like uh-huh something's wrong you have food here get out something, something <laughs> was wrong <laughs> yes yeah, so she did rescue us but again i'll probably never speak to her again never speak to her again mm-hmm well there's that so we were locked on our porch for over two hours last monday or last monday monday that was a fun monday is what i was was trying to say such a fun monday honestly (laughs) we had such a good day till that point yes and we stayed really calm calm cool and collected um tanner was a little nervous i was like what's the what sort of thing's gonna happen though we get to we're stuck in our own home i was like i have to pee in a thing and then pour it off the porch that's literally the worst thing that happens actually the worst thing that happens is that i have to shadoopy what am i doing then i guess you just stick your butt over the porch <laughs> like i don't know i guess like in old century times i'm like you could put it in the planter and then we could just throw it off the planter we would have been resourceful uh, okay? yeah we would have figured stuck. it out would be my issue would be the smell of it all mm-hmm. but yeah it was it was a wild day and I'm glad we like just talked it out loud. We I was live like, What's to tell the tale. Happen? We just have to stay calm. Yeah. And I was like, well, this is going to be Potter for the podcast. Yes, it is. And it was. And guess what? We finally got our plants planted. The plants are planted. We're not on the porch and we will not be leaving that dowel rod in that little hole, ever hole whenever we walk outside to shut the door. <laughs> we <laughs> won't be played so like that bad. again. We also have other solutions, but we're going to leave those to ourselves. Yeah, we'll leave those solutions to ourselves and we'll keep it coming. Yeah. We made it through. We made it. We still live in our home. We are actually survivors. And this was just like, I feel like for me, this was maybe a test run, a slow roll to do like Survivor, the TV show. So CBS call me or um, I would even do Big Brother. I, I would love if you did Big Brother. I would instantly be voted off. I'd be so annoying though because You'd I be know like one myself. You're the oldest people on the show. Uh, well, that's a fact. I'm the <laughs> oldest Tanner alive. <laughs> that's what our Uber driver said the other day. Yeah, but he actually so was because he was like 15 to 20 years older than me. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I would do either one of those shows, but I know for a fact I would be voted off instantly because I would be so insecure like i'd be like they're all talking about me like i'd be so paranoid and if everyone didn't love me instantly which could happen and if that's the case i would probably win um but if not if they kind of turned on me i know i'd be the first to go you know when it's time to go Mm -hmm. how do you think you would fare you know i don't know because i have a little bit of a loser complex (laughs) that's kind of what i'm saying like if if i went in with like the attitude that i was going to win and be besties with everyone like I could do well. But if I went in with my regular attitude, it'd be over. Yeah. I. So in life, sometimes I view myself as like, and it comes from childhood, right? But mm-hmm. like, in like, I get like the odd man out. Okay. That's and fair. so like, yeah, you carry some of that with you into adulthood and you like try not to think that way. And I've like definitely broken that cycle many times of like, you know, that's actually not true. Right. But I, I think, you know what? Some things... I just usually know when I go in in the beginning what the, how things are going to go. 
you kind of already just like have a feeling or something. Yes. Yeah. Like I have a feeling or like, because like you, when we see people, we can start like, if we can relate with them with somebody that we've had in our past, like you're like, okay, I'm recognizing some patterns. I'm recognizing some things about you. I'm recognizing these things. So it would really just depend on like the other cast. I feel like. I love that theory. So you think if you like, we're in a room with this cast, with these castmates for like an hour, you all have like a little cocktail hour to get to know each other or something like you like could probably see like, okay, I'll end up number three or I'll end up going home first. Like mm-hmm. that kind of thing. I feel like, no, literally. I like that. Yeah. No, it depends on who the cast is. And I think, I think I could be like, maybe not, yeah, going home first versus I think you could do it in range. Like I'll go home fifth to seventh yeah. or I'll go home. Like I'd be in top five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. I think you could definitely do that. And honestly, have, Survivor, I don't know about because it's like a whole different like mentally taxing game. Right. But I know usually in things that I'm wanting to compete or willing to compete in, I'm going to be a top five biddy. Like mm, I'm not putting myself fair. out there to like to lose. Flail. <laughs> no, literally. I have done things before. Like I present for my work and like I've done things before where I didn't practice enough or I didn't do it like in the setting that I needed yeah. and I failed. And from those times, I learn how much practice needs to happen, yeah. how much things I like failure to me is such an inspiration. Yeah, for like, sure. Like I'm really down in the moment, but I'm like, okay, I know what to do. It's like right. Miss Americana when she talks about, I'm just going to make a better record. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, like, that's how I feel like when I fail at something. And so I think I could do it. Yeah. And be at least in top five because I'm wow. practiced. I work really hard. I love that. I, I work could. insanely Wait, hard. Wait, you should maybe go on Survivor and not me. I would literally hate that. <laughs> But Big Brother, mm. I feel like I could do because mm. I'm really good at also like playing that game of like, oh, you need me. What? And I'm such a good listener. Like I'm, I'm literally just here. No, that's my own true. Horn. No, but, but like, you are. You're right. I'm very, I'm cognitively. Okay. So it might just be like the ADHD and like the other like spectrum of things, but mm. I'm an incredibly observant person. Yeah. And that's how I've learned to navigate through life is by watching other people's actions because I don't naturally feel comfortable in most situations well, it's called mirroring we do it all the time that's yeah. natural but yeah no yeah, and i but, know like that's a different level too mm-hmm, what but you're for talking me, about like i don't naturally feel comfortable in most situations like yeah. i like i have to understand the situation and learn how to operate in it i think that's why i love tv so much is because like it showed me so many different things and that's why i like to consume so much information because it teaches me how to operate mm, yeah and so yeah that's fine. I think once you learn that, you can just operate. So I feel like Big Brother, I could do. I, I agree. And whereas I think I would probably be better, not than you, but just like f- for me, I think I would be better at Survivor because it is social, but it's also a lot of your own mort- mortal fortitude at the beginning. Yeah. And like playing like an individualized sport like tennis, like that really helped me like have that like it's it's all in you. it's not like a team sport like this is an individualized thing like i'm playing for me and like only myself and that's the attitude you have to have in these games but especially survivor and like to do it with no food i could do that i would say tanner actually has like wild self-discipline yeah and so i can just see you eating one grain of rice and being fine well yeah and then like you might you're he's gonna tweak on someone eventually oh i will snap. but he's also gonna out play the like mental fortitude challenges yes yes yes. like i know like if he like was stuck doing like on those like plank things with like the feet like tanner would like long term they would have to pull me off like i would just go to a place like they would pull me off because he's done that before like when we were driving in like seven feet of snow yeah like and it was beside us it was just like the mental fortitude of like we're gonna get through this and we're gonna do this and Mm -hmm. like there's nothing else we could do like he just like doesn't freak out in those moments he just continues to do it and you work out almost every day. So like, I think you'd have like that. I would have some the core strength to do advantage there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's fair. No, I agree. Yeah. And I think you'd be a nasty survivor player uh, in a good way. I would. I would be so ruthless. Like they wouldn't even know what was happening. Well, and you grew up with the girlies. I did. And so Tanner knows how to operate in girly conversation. Oh yeah. In the sorely girly conversations. I think, yeah, I think it's much easier for you to connect with women and you always for say sure. this too. So yeah. like, yeah, I feel like you could just like help run that camp. And what I do know in Survivor, a lot of guys that do well, i.e. Charlie right now, like mm. surround themselves with the women and they're usually emotionally no, intelligent. I would only have a women's alliance. I would not be working with any men. Maybe mm-hmm. one because you do need a little brute strength. Mm-hmm. So I would have one on the side, but like my core three women. No, literally. Mm-hmm. And actually, Survivor right now is so many women. It There's is. Only I love two. to see it. I know. We usually only have like one girl still in. Yeah. We have multiple females representing only two males. Yeah. 
I, I like the way this is going and I'm excited to see what happens in Survivor. Me too. Yeah. I'm a survivor. Speaking Reba. of, uh, my girl Reba, yeah. if you haven't been on TikTok, I'm literally speaking her up on the algorithm right now. TikTok, I'll go TikTok. with them. <laughs> 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 she did this dove ad and she like is doing like this AI dove ad and it was, I don't understand it. Is it new? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's brand new. And she's like holding up this like AI feature to her face. And she's like, that don't look like me at all. And she's like, and we're partnering with Dove to make sure you feel good in the skin you're in because by 2025, 90% of content will be AI generated. And I was just like, what is this? I'm so perplexed about this commercial. And what are you trying to shoot? And I was even more perplexed because Reba has had so much work done. So like, don't pretend like your wrinkles and everything are real. You know, it makes a lot of sense that all of this content would be created or AI generated because they're not paying the robots to generate it. But you know who they are paying? The people that usually make this content. So that's some actual BS to me, Reba. Don't tell me that. I'm upset with my grandma, Reba. No, well, Reba is She's just, part of the machine, but it's not her fault. Well, no, she's stating a fact saying that we need to come against oh, the AI. Okay, I take it all back. Reba mm-hmm. is my queen, as I thought. Thank I you. I she like, is telling us what I thought I, I heard. Like, she's usually on the right side of history. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> no, um, she's like, and so I don't know if Dove has a partnership to come against some of this like AI stuff. And I like, think that's also some of what's happening like in our government right now. But like, that's the thing that happened with SAG. Also, we can't pretend that AI is going to do the work of human beings and people are going to eat the brunt of that soon. For sure. Yeah. It's great. But also, and I also thought about that too, the layers of that. Because what does 90% mean? Because we have AI generated stuff on our content right now. I mean... Mm. The neon sign in the stories oh, things every day. Like, yeah. you know, so, so much of that is AI generated. So I'm just wondering, like, what does that mean by AI generated? Or even like captions are AI generated. Like. Right. That's true. So there's so much of it that I but just I don't know. I swear that I saw a coach commercial. It said there were real people in it. And the way they filmed it, they looked like they were avatars. Like, anime. no, it was so wild. And I was so like, like is Zoe Zalzana on this? Yeah. I didn't understand what was happening. So, yeah, I think that they could just be doing full commercials in AI at one point. And then that's where. We have to draw the line. Draw it. Yeah, because you're putting these artists out of work, these content creators out of work. Like it's right that actually like dream up and like made the prototype for you to be able to do this. Like you know, like it comes from programming. Like how do we do it? It gets better by learning our interfaces. Like they're just curating like what we've already created. Right. Yeah. So no, it is. It's like it is problematic and. We'll see where it goes. But listen, robots, if you're listening, we love you so much. Please like support our podcast. Like bring it to number one. Thank you. Bring it to love number one. Thank you, the robots. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We worship and support you. Mm-hmm. Um, we tell should we? Alexia she's nice all <laughs> no, the time. She's our other queen besides Reba. I know. Um, <laughs> should we dive into the stories? Yeah, let's dive in because we've already been talking for I know. a minute. Well, I knew the, the fodder was going to be strong today. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though. Okay, so I have an update about Harry and Meghan. Ooh, I always love a Harry and Meghan update. Are they still in Nigeria or what is the update? I'm sorry. Well, the update, we just talked about their sparkling summer. Yes, we did. I don't know how sparkling it's going to be. Uh-oh. Trouble in paradise? Harry and Meghan's Archwell Foundation is deemed delinquent. <gasps> But, like, what does delinquent mean? Like, 30 days past due, 60, 90? Like, let me know. Because, you know, like, everybody's been a little delinquent before. I'm like, yeah, whom amongst us hasn't been a little delinquent? But um, they were failing to pay fees and submit records is what the other part of the headline states. Again, like, I know that if you have a business, there are certain forms that you have to submit every year to the state, like, Secretary of State, all these other things that you have to do. And so, like... If you miss that one form, it's pretty easy usually just to file it, pay the fee, and, like, move on. Yeah. But, again, like, why do you not have people doing this for you? You're a huge, huge – what are they? They're not a corporation. They're, like, They're a, like a non-profit organization. A non- thank you. You're, you're a huge organization, and you should have people doing those forms for you. Like, it shouldn't fall – I mean, it should fall on them because their names are attached. But you know what I mean? Like, why do they not have people running this right for them? Yeah. Who is literally like doing the paperwork behind the scenes? Because I don't think it's Megan doing the paperwork. If so, she failed to do some stuff, it seems. And I don't think it's Harry doing the paperwork. No, certainly not. And uh, sadly, I think Megan is the admin of the family. That's for sure. I don't I can't see Harry being able to admin. No. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, I'm just surprised I don't have people. I wonder if it was oversight. We'll see. A delinquency notice, warning of assessment, and they're not able to like accept any new charitable donations or disperse any charitable donations until they get this fixed. Well, they need to be making some moves because if you're a nonprofit, that's how you receive money. Like that's how you continue to run your your organization. So Absolutely. like, hello, like fix this. If not, we're going to have to shut your doors. And yeah, it's much fanfare. It was launched in 2020 and delinquent in January for not spying its annual registration fee or renewal fee since February, 2023. Well, that's like, okay, it's been a year. So that's not like a couple months past due. That's true. So yeah, that's, um, I wonder if they just thought they were above it. I do. I wonder if Harry just thinks, duh, I'm above it. Like, I'm he doesn't pets. understand real life, to be honest, I don't think. Like real life in the way of like, you have to file taxes, you have to file paperwork, you got to do this, first of all. He's never done that. Right. Second of all, I don't know what they do over where he's from. Um, mm, yeah, who knows? In terms of like taxes and government, like I don't understand universal IRS. <laughs> but yeah, so maybe like, did he just think I don't have to do this because it's I'm a Harry? That seems very hairy of him. I could see that for him. Harry. Yeah. And again, I just don't know that it's he's a hairy like situation. the brightest bulb in the box. So it might have just, he maybe just didn't think about it. Yeah. No, we'll see. Yeah. We'll be watching. Hopefully you can fix your delinquency. Archwell Not delinquency. Foundation. This is, um, I wonder if they had calls like 1 800 223 774 864. Because that will happen to you fast. And say it comes up like spam risk, and it's like, hi, Megan and Harry, you have not done your taxes. (laughs) Please call back to file your taxes. (laughs) Hi, hi, we see that you didn't file your state reports. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Oh, Harry and Megan, wow, we love them. You know something else that I've been seeing all over TikTok this weekend? Tell me more. Tell me more. Um, this Micah Miller person, have you heard anything about her? She was married to a pastor in North Carolina. His mm. name was Paul Miller. His name is Paul Miller. Um, and she and him were married and then they separated. There was a lot that's come out since then. Have you seen anything about this at all? Actually, yes. I have seen a little bit about this. And the other day it did come across my TikTok feed. And I was so confused because the lady, what came across my TikTok feed was a lady that she's now figure out is Micah. Yes. And she's on the phone with the 911 dispatcher letting her know where she's going. Oh, wow. Okay. See, I haven't even heard that. And thing. like, then she was like gone. Yeah. And so... That was sketchy, but I was like, okay, that's so weird. I don't know what this is connected to. I don't know anything about this story. So I just kept scrolling. And then when you told me this, I was like, oh my gosh, that's the lady from the TikTok. Yes. Yes. So the way it came across my desk was also via TikTok. And, you know, we usually don't do like TikTok stories here, but since they sponsored the Met last week, I'm like, oh, well, if they're good enough for Anna Win Tour, they're surely good enough for me. And that is correct. <laughs> that's on God. Um, but we, what was, I lost my train of thought. Oh, Micah Miller. So, how it came to me was I saw this pastor get up at the end of his church service and talk about his wife and how she's no longer with us, that she unalived herself. And the way he says it's very weird. Again, it's at the end of the service. He's like preached for an hour, I guess, or, you know, done something for, you know, for a while and decides just to come up at the very end of service and let the, let the congregation know, like, please don't talk about it in the sanctuary. Please don't talk about it. Just like leave the sanctuary quietly, like, and drops the bomb. And then it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. And so then it comes out that not only, um, about his wife, but the, he has a girlfriend that he, yeah. his girlfriend is, um, he's basically groomed her uh, allegedly, uh, allegedly, um, groomed to, um, since she was like 14 years old because he was originally the youth pastor. So yes. there's that, which also just gives me the nastiest cringes in the world. And so, um, people are starting to put the things together that, um, they're, it's not going well. It's not going well. The way it's looking to me, and I'm, it's an ongoing investigation. So this is all hearsay, allegedly, 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 allegedly. It's looking as though he maybe had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. And, and pushed her I, towards I think, it. I think we'll, we'll wait, but let's put a timer on this, KB. In six months from now, I could see there being a Netflix documentary about this. Oh, there will definitely be a Netflix documentary about this. There's going to be like a a full thing. It's going to be like 
I hate to say this, like Gabby Petito, but like on steroids. But on steroids. He was wearing her diamond pendant. Like there's a lot of like weird, like creep after, after she'd passed. Like a lot of weird, creepy things that this man continues to do and like makes himself look guilty as sin, as Taylor mm-hmm. would say. And um, it's not, I, I'm going to be following, but I don't, I'm, I'm scared. No. And Micah also kept a journal talking about the daily struggles to like basically be alive and like abuse in her marriage. Yes. And so like, there's just a lot that's going to come out about this. And I hope it opens the whole other ring of like, if he was hurting underage people, which it sounds like he was, then like accountability be held for that. And like, yeah. Yeah. There needs to be justice. There's a lot of victims in this situation. A lot. And yeah, we'll keep you posted on what we find out more on. With Paul and Micah Miller. Um, did you see? Oh, you actually, this is part of the, the, the um, rhyme of the, the, rhyme day. Of the day. Yes. Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. Um, yeah. Kelly Clarkson's fans react when she finally comes clean about how she really lost weight. And how did she do it, KB? She lost it by... And her. taking a unspecified oh. weight loss drug. Which she claimed, or which she said was definitely not Ozempic, though. Yes. She kept saying, to me, this was very, I was a little sad for Kelly in this moment for okay. two reasons. I'm sad at Kelly and sad for Kelly. Okay. I'm sad for Kelly because she doesn't owe us any conversation about what she is taking for to sure. take care of her body. It's medicine. It's medicine. It's medicine. And it is like actually here to help people. Literally. She she doesn't owe us anything, first no. of all. We don't get to have access to people's life like that. And when they want to freely give, then they can freely give. Yes. However, she only, she minced words. And I hate when people mince words. It pees me off because it shows me how much you're a liar. You are. Yeah. It just makes me feel like you're not genuine. Like I don't, I can't, I can't trust trust what comes out of your mouth from now on. Like, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to trust Kelly. Yeah. So maybe not a liar that you are, but like, it just, it doesn't feel trustworthy. And Kelly kept just saying, I'm not on Ozempic. I'm not on Ozempic. Okay. Yeah. But she is like on a weight loss drug and she, I wish she would just feel like I'm doing what I need to do to take care of my health. That would have been a great response. Yeah. Who cares? Does it, what does it matter if I'm on a drug? If I'm taking care of my health, there's just so many things you say it, but I'm also not in the public eye and I'm not living that, but the people are coming for her. Yeah. People are really upset. People are very upset. I did see this and I, you know, I do understand it because she is like, she has a talk show where she comes on every single day. Like we do here and like tries to build rapport and relationships with people. And like, if you're not open and honest, people will always sense that out and suss that out. And like, if you're not genuine, they can't connect to you. No. And for me, I just like don't see the issue of being like honest about it. Exactly. Or even to say like my medical, we're not going to talk about like my medical journey here. Like that's where I draw the line. Like Mm -hmm. I have a boundary with that. And like if she would have said that, I'd have so much respect instead of saying like I don't take Ozempic. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Like, you know who actually did this? I think pretty well. Claudia Oshray. Claude, I agree. Mm-hmm. She just like people ask her about it, and she'd be like, "I'm not like talking about it." No, and that's that's exactly the right response. Like, it's, my medical journey is my medical journey. Exactly. My health is my health, and it's not your decision of whether I lose ten pounds or gain ten pounds. Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't live in this body. You don't live in it, and so I just like I'm a little over the commentary on people's bodies in general. Oh, Let God. people live. <laughs> yeah. And. Yeah, I just like her fans are calling her a liar. People are saying they're disappointed in her because Kelly's so honest and open. And you know what? Like what? I get I'm a s- incredibly honest person. If you ask me about any of the work I've had done, anything I've yeah. taken, I would tell you immediately. I'm like, yeah, I've done that. I've done that. I've for done sure. that for sure. Like I get Botox in my forehead every four months. Yeah. Like there's just so much that I'm transparent about. And but. But if she doesn't want to be. Yeah, that's not everyone's journey. Mm-hmm. But again, like she's I think, like I give you so much. And like, why do you get to have this too? And I completely agree. And I've always loved Kelly. My first memory of her is on American Idol. Did you watch her on American Idol? Some people wait a lifetime. Literally the best song. I have chills from just thinking about how good it is. Uh, it is such a good song. It's just like the pivotal like song of like. Was it fifth grade? Mm. I don't know. I think it was fourth grade. I think it was fourth grade too because I remember Justin was on and he had curly hair and my cur- <gasps> my hair hadn't turned at the time. It was still straight. We did have HBO and I watched from Justin to Kelly all the time. 
That was so good too. Yeah, it was like they did like weird dance scenes and she had these chunky highlights and he was so cute. So cute. Yeah. And your curly hair? Oh. Uh, yeah. It, I know. It you were of... like, he's my inspiration. <laughs> he's my inspo. And then the Lord gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Actually, Accutane gave it to me in puberty, but you know, that is what it is. Yeah. And so, and also I just like, duh, it's like the whole Mindy Kaling thing. Mindy's like, I'm not taking anything. I'm just eating right and walking. And I'm like, yeah, eating right and walking. You've been doing that your whole life. Yeah. So is it eating right and walking? Right. Or did you go get blood work done? Did you start something? Did you do this? But also we don't, we don't deserve to ask people those questions. We're not friends with them. Like, no, that's true. We really yes, don't. Yes, they're role models, but like American celebrity is such a wild thing. And we love talking about pop culture. That's literally what we do. But I do think talking about people's medical stuff is just. Yeah. Like, well, it's just we have so much access. And I think if more celebrities were just like, like Claudia was just like, absolutely not. Like, this is a medical thing. Like, I'm not speaking on that. Like, and put up that boundary. Like, I think celebrities need to do that unitedly. Like, mm -hmm. we're. No We're not giving you this about medical information. Like that's wild. Like you basically already know where we live. Like I can't give you anything else. No, literally. Like I already have to have my home in a trust because of this yeah. and this and this. No, I just, there needs to be, we love pop culture. We love speculation. We love to do things like that. But within reason. We're not creeps. But yeah, we're not creeps. Like I'm not going to like, I don't care to know what drugs you're on. No. To the, to Unless take you want to tell me because I'll yeah. listen. Like, no, I honestly. love that. Yeah. But I don't need to hear about your Lexapro or your, no. like, like if you're like you know i was just thinking of one word that i could think of that's yeah. fair yeah lexapro yeah <laughs> but yeah i don't need to know like that's your business lexapro, and if you want to share it I that's don't great need to know yeah mm. yeah this is just a uh if, it, if you want to share like if that's you want to share that's great something else that i don't know that i need to know from mm -hmm. jennifer lopez <laughs> j-lo needs to take a low stroll she just needs to go back to her little miami home where they live in like billionaires club island yeah and be with ben be with ben be with ben like that's so cute be with your kiddos they want to see the world you. do i mean we just don't need you to be trying to give us a tour at this time at this current juncture no thanks yeah she ha like some people you just don't realize how much they're so on a out of tune unattuned yeah like out of not touch. in tune out of touch out of touch yes and it's really gr she's grading on me at this moment and i saw her at the met and this she was also mean to people at me. yeah at the was, met first of all don't be mean to the reporters that literally made you they're the only reason people talk about you and you're paying them to talk about you and you won't even give them two seconds of your day? Really? Okay. Like, you're not that special. Nobody's no. special to be just, like, disrespectful to people. Yeah, you like, can't be nasty to people and expect them to like you. Like, that literally doesn't work. And now her team is in crisis, and they're actually asking her to cancel her This Is Me tour. I've been asking her for two weeks. Listen to the pod. Tickets are now being scalped for as little as... Ten dollars. Yeah, it's like embarrassing. Yeah. I asked her to retire last week or two weeks ago, and she didn't listen. She continues to push the store on people, and we're not buying it. So. And like, isn't Ben making enough Duncan money? I swear, he has to be. No, literally, Ben is always like popping his pee for Duncan. <laughs> like, I just like don't know like what else is there to do. He's making enough money off of these like huge brands. Like, you have already done so many things. Can we stick with um that show she did? Yeah, her being like a beauty influencer or mm -hmm. something like I would be totally fine yeah, with that. Yeah, and she has like an intimacy, like she has like a lingerie thing. She yeah. has her own beauty line. She's done so many movies. She's headlined the Super Bowl. I don't need any more I movies, just like though. I think it's time for you to take a nap. Yeah. Just like do the businesses that like you don't really have to promote strongly. Like your lingerie line, like you can do ad campaigns for once a quarter. Great. Then you like roll that out you know like just the easy stuff like i don't need you making movies i don't need you making music certainly and i don't need you on tour and hmm. she's just like she's done this to herself like with the tiktoks and like yes. the whole media tour and then we got people that didn't sign an nda that were just like she was so wild on set she practiced that i'm from brooklyn line like 30 times before we could get the full take like there's just like so much nonsense surrounding her people don't want jenny from the block people want jenny to go lay down well we just need her to be genuine again jenny like, to be genuine thank you yeah like let's let's keep it genuine people from jenny to the block to genuine to genuine the rapper <laughs> No, or, probably sorry, not. Genuine. I didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> He's like, I'm so much better than Jenny from the block. 
You He's are. Mad. You're right, Jenny Wine. We apologize. We um, do apologize. We would never put your name with hers. Um, but yes, Jenny from the Lock needs to be a bit more genuine. Yeah, she. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not going far. And this isn't a hating in women business as podcast. Oh, no, it's certainly not. I'm giving her career advice. I'm like, do these things. Like, I want to see her because she's she's beautiful, right? Like, right, she's beautiful. She's stunning. I would take, she gives I would us take the any same skincare white gown advice. and 84 different variants. So true. The see variant. Through. Um, <laughs> she, see through always, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if she gave me any skincare advice, I would gladly take it. She has beautiful skin. Like, anything like that. But, like, stick to what you know and be genuine about it, please. Like, that's all we're saying. And on that note, I'm going to turn on my favorite Jennifer Lopez movie, Hustlers. It's a great movie, actually. Let's and, hype her up. Yeah, literally. It's such a good movie. And Kiki Palmer in that movie. Kiki Palmer, chef's kiss. We were actually, um, there was a Tyler Perry movie on the other day and we saw, yes. I was like, oh my gosh, it's Kiki in the back seat. baby Kiki Palmer. She was like 10 years old. She was a little girl that was popping her gum, if you know that scene. And then Medea reaches back and gets her together. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah kiki palmer shout out we love you hustlers that was such a good movie julia styles makes an appearance at the end of hustlers i'm not oh. spoiling anything for you go watch hustlers it's so lol funny and on that note let's wrap it up let's wrap it up thank you so much for listening to the couple's couch podcast where we give you our daily click fake culture stories and everything in between you can find us typically monday through friday dropping you all of your stories and you can find us also on tiktok and instagram and youtube shorts talk to you later love, love you. you bye, bye.